What's up guys, welcome to a brand new Dragon Ball What If story. This one was a Patreon request by Pineapple. I had previously covered this topic a long time ago, back when we didn't know almost anything about Planet Yardrat. Now we'd know a lot more, so I'm excited to tackle this one. Let's try to hit 4000 likes, and I'll continue the story. I'm already writing part 2 because of how fun this first one was. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss the best Dragon Ball What Ifs out there. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Maybe it's because I'm constantly fighting, destroying, that I'd actually like to save something for once. Especially someone who is judged to be lower class, like my Kakarot. The low class Saiyan Bardock hops through the night on the planet Vegeta, pot in arm. His wife Gine goes behind him, wiping tears with each jump. The two lay the pot down far enough away from the city. They're about to make their ultimate choice for the sake of their son. I programmed this to a distant planet called Yardrat. Its people are relatively weak in power, but powerful in technique and ability. Frieza doesn't seem to have any interest in it, but if he ever does, he will be protected. We'll see you real soon. Don't forget us, Kakarot. The pod blasted off, and a month later, Gine, Bardock, and nearly every single Saiyan would die by Frieza's hand. Kakarot, however, traveled across the stars and towards his destination, Planet Yardrat. The pod crash landed down the side of a mountain. Several pink, yellow, and green creatures sped towards it, curiously circling around it, until the hatch door opened. The child, no bigger than a basket, came rolling out mid-tears. The Yardrats did not know how to react to his cries, some freaking out and running around, but a single Yardrat approached it, holding the child in his arms. My brothers and sisters, calm your minds. This child has arrived from the stars in distress. Your worry is only making his situation worse. Now, who might you be? The pod had little to no information about the child. No name, no family, only a planet of origin, Vegeta. Gasps filled the air when they heard this, but Pibara insisted that they remain calm. This is but a Saiyan child. Their strength may be legendary, but this one in particular is but a babe, with a power low enough that they could easily deal with it. Was he sent out here to destroy the planet? Perhaps, but a crying child is not something the Yardrat could ignore. They had time to change the child's life. He was given a second chance. Pibara thought this, knowing full well that a few nights before Kakarot arrived, he sensed a great disturbance, as if millions of voices cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. He looked at the boy. He had stopped crying and instead showcased a contagious smile. Pibaro returned with that smile, asking his brothers what name he should be given. The Yardrats finally agreed on a name, after some deliberation. Shira, taken from Shirataki Noodles. But for the sake of our story, I'll continue calling him Goku. The Yardrats cheered for their new brother. They brought him into their home, where Pibara would welcome him with open arms. Many Yardrats did not know where he came from, or who he was. Pibara largely kept it a secret as to not make his people afraid, but he raised him with care. He was violent, but Pibara knew what he was getting himself into. Any time the kid would rage out, he could simply take some of his key with four spirit fission. Even so, he was difficult to deal with. Pibara and the other Yardrats raised the boy on a strict key-based regimen. He learned a lot, and his mind slowly calmed down. He became stronger than the Goku we know as a child, especially when he comes to key based techniques. Even so, he could never get to the point his peers did. Pibara wondered why. Was it as simple as the fact that he was a Saiyan? That wasn't entirely wrong. Goku was always full of energy. His mind would often become unfocused, to the point where he'd fall from the high peaks of Yardrat. This caused a certain Yardrat named Hatsuka to tease and bully Goku. This was discouraged by everyone else, but Hatsuka was proud of his abilities, being able to duplicate himself at a young age, something that was reserved for higher levels. Even so, so Goku took his teasing as a challenge to better himself. He wanted to prove Hatsuka wrong, and the two formed a sort of rivalry. In the end, the young Yardrat and the Saiyan boy spent a lot of time together, even if Hatsuka would deny being his friend. Goku continued to practice his instant transmission daily, traveling around the planet, but Goku wanted more. He wanted to explore other worlds out there and understand the Saiyans. 
he knew very little about them or their situation. All he knew was that he had a tail and that he needed to be careful around a full moon. There was a section of the city around to where he had landed that was completely destroyed after he ignored Pibar's comments and transformed at the sight of a full moon. But that was long ago. He had helped rebuild ever since then, and knows better than to let that Ozaru take him over. But there were so many mysteries about where he came from, and who he was. He tried to focus on the most powerful key signature he could find. This proved to be a problem. Child, careful. You need to be able to return. But I can see it. I can see something strong. It's scary. It's powerful. Don't go, my son. You don't know the dangers of- But some energy around there. It feels familiar. Almost like family. Wait, don't. Goku disappeared before Pibara could reach him, into the unknown. Pibara wanted to go after him, but he couldn't locate him right away. He hoped his son would be okay, as he put all the other Yardrets to work sensing his power. Meanwhile, Goku appeared in a strange location, a spaceship filled with aliens from all over the galaxy, all wearing similar armor and a strange device on their face. They all turned to look at him. Goku met eyes with a trio in particular, one with long hair, mouthed something to the others, which Goku couldn't hear over the sounds of the soldiers moving in towards him. It looked like he said something about a carrot, while the short one cocked an eyebrow at him. A soldier moved in front of everyone, a tall blue one with a very flamboyant demeanor. You, how did you, a tail, a Saiyan, Vegeta, who is this? What? Just because I'm a Saiyan must mean I know all Saiyans? I bet you think we all look the same too, Zarbon. Tch. Goku started to run away, as Vegeta commented on how he really didn't expect any other survivors. But he was so weak, he didn't even care. Key Blast flew past Goku as he shot right back, one even hitting the Saiyan with long hair. It surprisingly hurt him quite a bit. Vegeta could tell that his power level wasn't up to par with his, thanks to his scouter, but that energy attack, it was stronger than he should be. One of Zarbon's men tries to grab Goku as he teleports away, only managing to rip off some of his Yardran wrappings. He was gone. Goku reappeared in a distant planet, filled with strange, little, but friendly looking people. Goku was just glad to be out of the fire. He pulled the cloak from a rack and put it over himself. He didn't know what he was, but he was very hungry. He took an apple from a street vendor, who followed after him, yelling at him to pay for it. But just as it seemed like he was going to escape, a young boy appeared in front of him. He shot right at his feet, shooting a warning to tell him to stop, and asking him to pay for what he took. Goku timidly said that he had little money, he just appeared here he doesn't know where he is. The other kid looked at him carefully. His face looked somewhat familiar, but he couldn't quite make it out. But it was clear from the look on his face that he really didn't have any money. Without thinking much, the kid simply paid for the apple. As he asked Goku just who he was, Goku gave his Yardrat name. The young boy introduced himself. His name was Granola, and this was Planet Serial. If he wanted food and a spaceship, he can help him. Thus, he led Goku to his home. There, a green man introduced himself. His name was Monaito, and he was a Namekian. Goku was surprised. He had heard of other races like this. He had an incredible key presence, not dissimilar to the Yardrats. At their place, Goku ate good food, as he told some stories about how he was adopted by Planet Yardrat, how he's still learning to teleport and stuff. He told it all in a very excited way. It was contagious, and both Monaito and Granola listened carefully. It truly was a mystical adventure that he'd been on already, but Goku told it as if he had so much more to see still. Monaito suggested that if he can teleport anywhere, but doesn't know exactly where his planet is, he could try looking for a key presence similar to his own. On planet Namek, there will surely be able to help him more. Plus, Serial's in the middle of nowhere. He's far away from his planet as he could be. Goku thanked them all for their help. He was learning so much. Goku finished off his story by saying that he teleported into a strange spaceship full of weird people, including others with tails. Others with tails? Well, yeah, I'm assuming they were Saiyans too. That's what I was looking for, but they didn't seem very friendly. I'll have to find another way to figure out more about them. But it looks like it's time for me to go. <laughs> Thank you, Monaito. Thank you, Granola. I'll never forget you guys. But wait, why are you concerned with Saiyans? Me? Well... Because I'm a Saiyan too! Granola finally saw that a little tail was poking out from under his cloak. Granola reached out to ask him more, to stop him from teleporting away. He couldn't believe he had just helped the Saiyan, but it was too late. Goku had teleported. 
Finding Planet Namek. Granola punched the floor, that could have been his last chance, to know what happens that fateful day on Planet Serial, to avenge his family. But Monaito stayed quiet. That kid didn't seem like all the other Saiyans, but he did seem familiar. That face, those eyes. Why did he know him? He wondered if they could ever see him again. Goku wondered the same thing as he appeared on Planet Namek. The sound of teleportation scares away some birds, while Goku's eyes clear up to see a lush green world. The key presence here was different from Yardrat, but incredibly powerful. Goku wasn't sure where to start, but he had logged onto someone's key presence. Who could it be? He looked down, realizing he was in a very high peak, standing on a house. As he took a step to fling himself up to fly, he felt someone reach out and grab his shoulder. Goku felt a cold sweat drop from his forehead as he quickly turned. A tall Namekian with an incredible key presence stood tall, arms behind his back. He wouldn't let go of Goku, asking just what the hell he was doing at the Grand Elder's home. I... A friend named Monaito told me to come here, that you guys could help me get home. Well, you're looking at the wrong place. Go home. That's... What I'm trying to do, let me go. Goku pushed the man away, which surprised the Namekian warrior. It had been a long time since he was able to fight someone. The warrior fired a blast, which Goku avoided by jumping and propelling himself to Nail. Suddenly, as Nail was going to block the first attack, there were two Gokus. He had used his limited ability to duplicate himself to attack from different angles. Nail defended well against him, but he was stronger than he seemed. The Namekian grabbed both Gokus by the neck, dragging him down to the ground and slamming him. Goku wiped some blood from his lip, but smiled happily. He was getting his blood pumping. Nail cocked an eyebrow. Who the hell was this kid to think that this was fun? Nail continued to blast at Goku, who was hit, but slowly managed to get two fingers up to his forehead and began teleporting around the blasts. This caused Nail to take a pause. That was a Yardrian move, wasn't it? He was a Saiyan. Goku rushed down at Nail, but the Namekian intercepted the attack and grabbed Goku by the face, slamming him against the column of the Grand Elder's home. The Yardrats may have fallen to you, Saiyan, but we won't go down as easily. But I didn't do anything. Nail, enough. That boy, bring him to me. I suspect he isn't our enemy, but he's a... A Saiyan, but I'm not with them. I just want to go back home, to Yardrat. Nail drops Goku and rolled his eyes. The two returned to the Grand Elder's home, where Goku explained the events, and how he wishes to return home. The Grand Elder smiled at Goku's story. He was quite a resilient kid. You have been on quite a few adventures already, but I'm sorry, child. Our brother Monaito was wrong. We do not have any kind of spacecraft to give, nor a teleporting technique. I... see. Sorry for the bother. What we do have, however, are Dragon Balls. Sir, you don't mean... The Grand Elder smiled at Goku, who looked at him in wonder. Guru explained that a set of challenges are required for those seeking the Dragon Balls. No one has used them in many, many years, but the Grand Elder suspected Goku could do it. Three wishes would be granted to those who pass. Goku's mind was still more focused on the fight he had with Nail, but a set of trials could be fun. He could use one of the wishes to return home, but what about the other two? Nail was unsure about Goku going through these trials, but he did have an infectious spirit. When the Grand Elder saw the slight smile on Nail, he told him to accompany Goku, but not help him unless it's 100% necessary. Nail complained, but a single move from the Grand Elder's hand made him stop talking. Thus, Goku and Nail set to the various Namekian villages to find the Dragon Balls and undergo these trials set by the Elders. Some trials were difficult, others easy. The first trial gave a false impression of how easy it would be, as he was told by the Grand Elder that he passed the first one. Help will be granted to those who seek it on Planet Namek. Thus, getting the first ball. This Goku is different than the one we know, so even if he isn't the sharpest tool in the shed, he is smart enough to pass tests and quizzes that required some logic. A puzzle that required math was tough for the young Saiyan, but he managed it in the end, with one or two whispers in the ear from Nail. According to Nail, he just wanted him out of the world, but he secretly liked the kid. He gained the six-star ball. Namekians are very much community-oriented, so one of the trials was simply cultivating alongside the villages. Goku did it in a flash, 
but he really enjoyed it. According to the Grand Elder, the Dragon Balls are linked to every Namekian. So, if you are to take something from the planet, then you must give something back. It was peaceful, as he planted crops in every single one of the villages. Goku got the three-star ball from this trial. Mail really got to appreciate Goku through them all. He was never scared of anything, and even though he was a Saiyan, he was more interested in learning and growing, rather than just destroying things. Him and Nail continued to train every now and then together. After all, these tests took around a week, with Goku insisting that the next time he will win for sure. The next trial was said to be a mental one, with Goku being tasked with counting every star out there in space. Goku sits there, actually counting for a while, but then pauses, not sure how to count that high, before saying, well, there's a lot. Well, actually, there's not really enough is there? I mean, there's still way more darkness up there than there are stars. The Namekians looked at him in surprise. He had come to that conclusion faster than many Namekians do. Goku was aware of the emptiness and the void as the main constant in the universe, despite the infinity of stars in the sky. It is that same emptiness in his mind which he will need for the next trial. For the spiritual trial, he was brought into a cave where a statue of Puranga was hidden, the statue which had been used to create the dragon in the first place. There, Goku was left alone with his thoughts to meditate. As he did, Puranga's eyes lit up. He could hear the Grand Elder's voice, but he imagined the dragon. Puranga asked him what would become of him if he died. Goku responded by saying that he'd just hang out there with other souls in other worlds. Puranga corrected himself. That's not what he meant. When he is dead and gone, what will it mean for him to be dead? Goku thought about it, picturing himself in his Yarjot outfit. He said that he hoped his family and friends would remember him, that he's remembered for being strong. For Puranga, this was a weak answer. Though it was true, it showed that Goku was not where he should be, but the Grand Elder believed in him. The fact that he saw death as just another aspect of his life meant a great deal, but he made sure to make Goku promise to return and give a new answer once he had grown more. Goku acknowledges that he probably wasn't ready for that question and that he will make sure to return. He was given the next Dragon Ball. The next challenge was a physical one. Goku was excited to fight, but the Grand Elder explained that it wouldn't be that simple. Up on the highest peak of the Namekian largest mountain lay a bird who guards a Dragon Ball. She never slept because of the shine of the two suns. She has a high-pitched whistle that deafens any Namekian that approaches it. He needs to find a way to get to it without having the bird become aware, and he can't attack the bird. Goku thought this was going to be easy. As he climbed up the mountain and got to the Dragon Ball. The sun blared in his eyes as soon as he was up top. The nest faced the sun directly, though the backside of it was covered with trees. No wonder the bird didn't sleep. As soon as he reached for the ball, the bird attacked. It was huge and Goku knew he couldn't attack it. The high-pitched whistle wasn't a problem though. This test was made with Namekians in mind. Because of that, Nail couldn't accompany Goku up there. He would have lost his hearing if he did. Goku tried again and again, racking his brain for over two days. But everything he did made the bird attack. But why? This was a dumb physical challenge. The only physical thing he did was climb the thing over and over again. If only it would go to sleep. That's when Goku had an idea. Nail went to check on Goku, only to see a large gathering of people around him. He was doing the unthinkable. He was grabbing onto the foot of the mountain and slowly pushing it. Was he crazy? Nail yelled at Goku to stop this at once, only to realize that he had already turned the mountain halfway around, away from the sun. Nail couldn't help but be impressed by the ingenuity, so much so that he didn't stop him. Goku kept on pushing. His aura sparking up. Now this was a physical challenge. He could have destroyed the mountain if he wanted to, but turning it was different. It was impressive. It didn't take too long before it was completely turned, with the bird for the first time in a long time not directly facing the sun, slowly falling asleep. Goku reached the ball, and everyone was left in disbelief. The final trial was one everyone thought Goku would pass with flying colors. He was to sit between two Ajiza trees, a symbol of peace, age, and strength of Namek. He was to meditate and reveal to the elders the secrets of his heart. An elder with a scale stood before him, a leaf of the tree on one side and nothing on the other, though he suggested that the empty side represented the Saiyan's heart. His heart had to be lighter than a single leaf to prove his worth. The ritual took a while. It was also a test of patience in that way. At first, it was crazy to the elders, as the scale leaned to his heart being lighter, but it slowly started to dip the other way. As they began exploring just who Goku was, the darkness within began to show, the dark power of the Ozaru, and perhaps something even beyond. And Goku struggled, as Nail and the Grand Elder rooted for him. There was a boom in power, a flash of golden light, as Goku was lifted up by his raw aura. His eyes flashed green for a split second, the purity of his heart blinked in and out, 
as something dark seemed to seep through. Goku fell to the ground panting. He was okay. One of the elders stepped up, saying that he had failed the final trial. Nail was confused. You can't expect us to give the Dragon Ball to someone with that kind of spirit within, but the kid isn't like that. Has he not proven this through his actions? Goku stayed quiet. Nail continued to defend him, but the Saiyan stood up and moved a hand over him. Nail, it's fine. It just means I haven't trained enough. I can do it. I know I can. I can control those powers, I know it! Goku wasn't even sure what the second flash was. The first one was the Ozaru, something Pibara had been trying to tackle, but the second one was different. Neither good nor bad, just a force. The Namekians didn't see that though. Murray, one of the elders, spoke up to give his vote for Goku, followed by another elder, explaining that though that power was terrifying, it didn't seem evil. Suddenly, the voice of the Grand Elder was heard in their minds. Village elders, hear me. This boy has proven himself. He only wishes to return home. This trial was made to see who it is we're given the Dragon Balls to, not for us to judge them unfairly. Nail, please obtain the 4-star ball and return to me. Goku couldn't believe it. As he cheered loudly, Nail smirked, taking him to the Grand Elder. The Elder who spoke up against Goku handed the Dragon Ball over. They were all loyal to the Grand Elder after all. Nail summoned the dragon, with Goku unable to believe his eyes at the enormous, muscular dragon appearing before him. He was a lot bigger than he imagined. Nail asked Goku for the three wishes, but still Goku couldn't think of anything but one. Nail insisted that he must use them. I... I wish for the crops we planted to grow healthy, that the planet and its people can enjoy the fruits of our labor. Nail and the Grand Elder were surprised. Did this kid not want anything for himself? Through his adventures, Goku had learned the value of Planet Namek and its people, but beyond that, he just wanted to go home. The Grand Elder was proud, as he nodded at Nail with approval. Nail recited the wish, as a rain like never before began on Planet Namek, giving life to the whole world. After a terrible drought years ago, this was truly a magnificent wish. Nail told Goku that that he still had two more. Better make them good. He can wish for stuff for himself. Goku thought about it for a second and finally settled. If he had to wish for something, then it would be for lots of food, just like the one Monaito made for him. He'll take it home and maybe force the Yardrats to improve their menu. The Grand Elder laughed, and the second wish was fulfilled as a pile of food landed by Goku, who instantly dug in. Well, thanks everyone. I will be sure to visit soon. My final wish is... Wait, child. I have something for you. You have truly proven yourself as Namekian in spirit. So, beyond what you've gotten, I give you all of that, plus a little extra. The Grand Elder placed the hand on Goku's head as he felt his energy explode. This was the most incredible boost the Grand Elder had ever seen. Could he defeat Nail now? No, not yet. But he definitely could one day. Goku smiled at the Grand Elder, lifting his fist up for a bump. The Grand Elder was confused but responded with the same fist bump. Goku turned to face Nail, revealing that on his back was now the Namekian symbol for strength, the Ajiza tree. I'll take a second to say that, no, this isn't like Goku getting orange or anything like that. I just wanted to allude to it and have this symbol represent his bond with the Namekians, before one of you asks. Anyways, Goku said goodbye to his friends, making Nail promise to train as next time he will win. A flash of light engulfed him and the food as finally Goku returned home to Planet Yardrat. Hatsuka saw him first, running with a huge hug. The Yardrats began to gather, asking him where he was and how he found his way back. Goku told them the story as Pibara made his way to the front. He smiled at his son, explaining that when he first got to Namek, he sensed his presence. He could have gotten him, but it felt like Goku was doing something important. He assumed Goku could feel his presence too, couldn't he? Goku chuckled. Perhaps he did sense him from Namek. Pibara laughed proud of him. It was clear that his trials had proved him to be stronger than ever before. It was time to continue his training. It was time for him to find a new master. Hatsuka gulped. He didn't mean- That's right. You have to seek out Master Soba. The crowd went quiet, but Goku was more excited than ever. Once he masters his techniques and grows a bit more, he could fight Nail again and find out more about the Saiyans. The Yardrat stayed quiet in confusion. Even after all that, Goku still wanted more? But Pibara, the Grand Elder, and Nail all knew that Goku would one day play a role in the fate of the universe. He just needed some help along the way. On the Frieza spaceship Goku landed at a few days before, Zarbon approached the throne room. The Emperor didn't turn around as the soldier explained. Lord Frieza, with that kid that appeared here, we analyzed this chest wrapping, no doubt about it now. Those were Yardrad rags he was wearing. A Saiyan living on Yardrad, curious. Zarbon enlists Vegeta and his crew to find him. 
there could be more hiding. On it, sir. Thank you so much guys for watching, this one was actually a Patreon request. One of my top tier patrons, this one took a while to make because I wanted to make sure that it was pretty good and I'm already starting on part 2 because I had so much fun writing it. So thank you Pineapple for requesting this video, I really hope you enjoyed. I did a story similar to this a long time ago but I wanted to remake it because we know so much more about Planet Yard right now. So it was the perfect chance. As always a huge thank you to the patrons of the channel. Evan Webb Stewart, Dennis Brockman, Lost Say in 997, Orange Crimsicle, Sunbloom the Flowergen, Chris Macareno, Yo Mama 420, Mao Lick, Daddy, Super Samurai, Beastie Man 420, Faisal Alsheref, Akko, Giovanni Jimenez, Xanos, D Man for Life, Marlon Gonzalez, Blaze 9526, Crazed PlayStation CK, The Main Finn, Free Flow Highway, Speedster 352, Shane K, True Lightning Striker, Ghost 1571, Kaiser Jirachi, Trent Rules, D Man Place 22, Jim G, Jerome Foster, Salil Paranjape, Keith Grimes, Dreadpool, and Samuel Randall. Thank you guys so much for enjoying the video. Let's try to get this one to 3000 likes, and until we meet again, see ya!